You know, when I was reading the report that two Laker players could be potentially joining the Clippers here soon in the offseason, I was kind of shocked. But then again, I wasn't shocked. And let me explain to you why. First of all, one of the players that was named that could be, you know, added to the Clippers from the Lakers is D'Angelo Russell. What I saw from D'Angelo Russell in that last series that they played against Denver, when it really counted the most, and somewhat of what I saw in the series prior a couple of games, he just really isn't the type of guy you want to count on because his jump shot is inconsistent. He is a, a lengthy type guard. He, he can handle the point. He does play the point pretty well at times, but I just don't know. I don't believe that he's one of those type of players that you can count on in big moments and big situations he's going to deliver because the only thing I see him do is run down the there off a of pick and roll and he may you know um score off a of pick and roll when he's hot and when he's got it going but if he doesn't have it going he definitely can't play defense he definitely can't defend anybody at his position at a high level um not even remotely close to you know helping a team that's trying to win a championship and then on top of that when he's missing a lot of shots he just keeps jacking them up he just keeps jacking up threes jacking up jump shots and it it, it really hurts the team more than it helps them and i feel like that's what happened with the the lakers i'm not saying that he was all the blame for the lakers losing heck no i'm not saying that i'm just saying that you know his point guard play is something that they really counted on or wanted to count on a lot more than they were able to because playing against a team like the nuggets he could have offset a lot of what the nuggets were doing if he could have made some timely baskets and made them count when they really needed them i see the point is with d'angelo russell anybody that gets him on a team that's trying to win a championship they don't really need him to score 20 plus points a game like he's actually capable of doing they just need him to score maybe 11 to 16 points 11 to 16 points a game and hit crucial shots when they need to be hit and that's something that D'Angelo Russell might get better with over time but I just don't really see it in his game right now he's been in the league for you know several years so I mean but either way I mean like if you if you ask me I I, I don't really see any point in getting him because like I say he's not going to benefit in the long run and you know with the Clippers they need to find a way to win a championship but they can't win a championship with with somebody like D'Angelo Russell at the point to me because really that's no better than having Russell Westbrook I, I mean honestly and I can't believe I'm saying this I'd rather the Clippers keep Russell Westbrook than to go after somebody like uh D'Angelo Russell. I mean, I, I honestly would because D'Angelo Russell doesn't have as much experience as Russ has in the playoffs. He's not well established. He's not somebody that uh, teams respect offensively or defensively. And he's just more of a liability, especially when his jump shot is not falling. We saw that with the Lakers. I mean, they really struggled having him out there on the floor, whereas if they took him out the game and maybe just started Dennis Schroeder or somebody else off the bench and just kept it, kept riding it like that, they might actually last longer, you know, in the playoffs possibly. So, like I said, I think he's definitely somebody that they shouldn't look at. And then the other player that they mentioned was Lonnie Walker the fourth. Now, Lonnie Walker, don't get me wrong, he come from the Spurs, and I always say anybody that plays with the Spurs has a mindset of, you know, playing real well, and fitting in and making the situation better. Though the Spurs players just really know how to do that because the way they're trained by Greg Popovich, it really he really trains Spurs players to think other than themselves. You know what I'm saying? Make the extra pass. Don't it's not all about you all the time. You can go out and drop 50 points as a player. But you dropping 50 points, is that going to help us win? So that's my point. Greg Popovich trains all his players with that mentality. And because he does that, that's the reason why the Spurs are always usually a good team. The Spurs usually always are you or used to be a good team. They used to be in the running for championships all the time when he had superstar caliber players. Now that he doesn't have that, well, they're a little bit less than average to average at best. But either way, you got to give, you know, Greg Popovich credit for a lot of players that he built up and turned into being very great, even greater than what we thought they would be. And one player I can definitely speak to on the Clippers is Kawhi Leonard. A lot of people didn't think Kawhi would be at the level that he's at just by looking at him years ago because he came in the league as a defensive guy. Now, Kawhi's got the full package and when healthy, he's a top two, top three player in the league 
I mean, no doubt about it. So my point is, I'm not saying Lonnie Walker can become that. I'm just saying that Lonnie Walker, he does give, if he did come to the Clippers, he would give the Clippers a lot of heart. A lot, uh, he would play defense, and like I said, when he's got his jump shot going, he can knock down shots, but he does have a lot of athleticism, and he moves his feet really well on defense, and I like that about him a lot. So with him specifically, eh, you might can go hit or miss with that. You might can say, oh, take him or you know whatever. It might not hurt for the Clippers to take him, but I don't really think the Clippers really need him, though, because when I think about Terrence Mann, you already have somebody that can do a lot of things that Lonnie Walker can do. Lonnie Walker is athletic. Terrence Mann is athletic. Lonnie Walker plays, you know, um, with a, you know, with an edge to him at times. So does Terrence Mann. You know, he can knock down a three, you know, here and there. You know, not maybe consistently, but decently. Lonnie Walker can do. So can Terrence Mann. And Terrence Mann might be a little bit taller, I believe. He's actually a little bit taller, I believe. A little bit more lengthy. And he's a little bit more energetic to me than Lonnie Walker is even though Lonnie Walker's good I just don't really feel like the Clippers need him because they already got Terrence Mann now for some reason they gave away Terrence Mann and maybe like a Norman Powell then acquiring somebody like Lonnie Walker the fourth would be maybe feasible then but other than that I don't really see why they would even waste the time of going after somebody like that when you already have somebody equivalent to his skills his skill set on your team already it just doesn't really make sense to me but either way like i said i'm ready to see you know what happens you know what uh what trade scenarios what other trade scenarios they have what other trade packages they have but either way as i said before when the clippers do make a trade i'm pretty sure marcus moore's name will be in the forefront of whoever they trade for or you know whatever team they trade with so i'm definitely anticipating to see that but if you think lonnie walker can um help the clippers and you know d'angelo russell could help the clippers leave any comments in the comment section we could talk about it as always and hey let's go from there